amount of rainfall. Actually, some locations. <laughs> shores of Alaska, a number of them are protected species under the Endangered Species Act, and scientists are scrambling to investigate what caused that mass die-off. Did somebody write stupid on my forehead and I didn't notice it? Farty's Lindsay France is live in our Los Angeles studio, and she's bringing us more. Lindsay, you spoke with the specialist on the case. What can you tell us about this, the possible causes? Well, right now they say there's no absolute certainty of what could have caused this. Uh, as they pointed out, there's been no big chemical spill, no big oil spill around the time of these deaths. So they're really looking at some sort of a chemical reaction in the water, what they call a harmful algal bloom that killed these 30 whales in the Gulf of Alaska. Let's listen to what one of the leading scientists on the case had to say about what that actually is. It's a, a, a bloom of uh, phytoplankton in the ocean that actually releases toxins and then those get accumulated um, into various prey and it works its way up the food chain and can cause um, paralysis and death. So uh, what she's pointing out there is that as it moves its way up the food chain and it, it builds up in these whales, obviously they consume a lot of it. Who knows what the uh, effects on obviously smaller marine life is, but it's very obvious when you've got carcasses of 70-foot mammals washing up along the beaches. Another important thing she wanted to point out is that these animals weren't beaching themselves. They were dead out at sea and then they washed up. Now, if you look at uh, a strandings chart that we've got here, uh, it's, it's really quite shocking if you look from 2010 to 2015. The highest we had in 2010 was 15. All, it's doubled. Now, uh, in August, another thing in, that's very important to point out is that these, uh, uh, these were made obvious in August, but these deaths might have occurred as far back as May, and then the mammals washed up. So this is actually something that happened back in May. Well, tell me, how, how would scientists go about investigating um, something of this scale, something of this magnitude. There's so many of them. Yeah, that's right. You know, I, looking at all of the, the information about this, uh, it's, it's very uh, complicated. One of the things that uh, the scientists I spoke with pointed out was that the North Pacific has been very warm this year. Let's listen to what they say about how uh, they're going about sort of taking a look at how this could have happened, especially with regards to the warm water temperature. We always see a handful of carcasses every summer, and um, and that is sad in itself. But when you see so many animals in such a short period of time, it is it is quite shocking and um, frustrating that we that we can't get a better understanding of what did occur. So uh, they're trying to right now get in and take a look at the carcasses themselves, and that requires a lot of work. You know, these aren't you know friendly sort of California coastlines uh, with, with sand and warm water. A lot of these carcasses have washed up. They're very hard to get to, and it's very dangerous. And so it takes a lot of manpower, a lot of time, and a lot of money. Now, I'm glad you brought up um, the, the money issue, because I understand that they had to declare a special declaration of an unusual mortality event um, to make way for more funding, to get more funding to investigate this. How are they going to use that money? 
Well, if you take a look at the Gulf of Alaska and where these strandings occurred, uh, it's it's Alaska, as we know, is a huge state, and it covers the the coastline covers a lot of territory. These strandings occurred all the way north, uh, up sort of near Anchorage on the on the other side of the Gulf of, Gulf of Alaska, down into Kodiak Island near Cold Bay. So they've got to get to these carcasses. They've got to get them open. We're talking chainsaws. We're talking big groups of people, and we're talking a safe way to get to these mammals so that they can cut them open and, and find out uh, what happened. One of the worries is that this could be a warming trend. Another thing that they pointed out was an El Nino. So if this is a phytoplankton thing, it's a lot like what you get with the red tide that will then poison the shellfish. If this is happening in a mammal this large, it could be pretty dangerous for the food chain and mammals that are protected under the Endangered Species Act. So they do need that money to get down and investigate something that, to Alaska especially, is a very important species. Certainly a, a lot of work ahead of them. Thank you so much for that. That was RT correspondent Lindsay France from our Los Angeles studio. So